Seven-year-old Angel Namuli is in primary two. She lives in one of the suburbs of Kampala, Uganda's capital. Every night before going to bed, Angel has to do her homework with support from her mother. And fortunately, electricity supply is very unreliable because of the power rationing system due to the insufficient supply from the national grid. Like many children in Uganda, she has to either rely on a kerosene lantern for source of light or do her homework very early in the morning after daybreak before going to school, a situation that greatly affects her studies. It affects her performance at school because we don't have enough light. She, we are using lanterns and at times it also gets off and she misses the homework from six. It goes off. At times, it's dim, so she can't do her homework as she could. Uganda Clays, the largest manufacturers of baked clay building products in Uganda. The company uses Italian-made heavy clay processing machinery to manufacture a variety of building materials from clay excavated using surface mining techniques. The factory therefore requires sufficient, reliable and affordable electricity supply to efficiently run the machinery in order to satisfy clientele's increased demand and also make profits. However, the current power shortage in the country has compelled the company to resort to the use of diesel power generators, a phenomenon that has brought about the rise in prices of the products due to high costs of production. The loss we incur, particularly on fuels, when we are buying for to run our generators, is over 100 million per month in terms of cash, 100 million shillings per month. And, uh... Energy, a key component for economic growth. Like many countries in Africa, Uganda's energy needs are very high and the electricity demand is growing at a very fast rate estimated at 7% per annum. Currently, Uganda's electricity supply is half the country's requirements to sustain the economy considering the country's industrial growth estimated at 5.3%. Presently, more than half of Uganda's power is generated at the Owen Falls Dam the largest in the country. For a long time, no power plants were being developed. Basically, since the first power plant was put in place in 1954, at least every 20, 15 years, new power plants should have been developed. So we had a huge deficit of power in the country. By the 1990s, Uganda's growing stability attracted increased investment, and that meant increase in demand for more energy. Although a new powerhouse was constructed in 1999 as an extension to the existing dam to provide additional 200 megawatts, it could not provide a permanent solution. Now, with the additional uh, 200 megawatts uh, coming from Owen Falls extension, then uh, we went up to 380 megawatts in 2003 or so. So basically, that was the power sector, a small power sector in its nature, without substantial increments over a period of time. As an immediate measure to mitigate the critical problem of inadequate electricity, government turned to thermal power generation as a supplementary alternative. But it could not satisfy the growing demand. Hydropower generation offers not only reliable, but also a clean and environmentally friendly alternative. Uganda's varied water bodies provide a wide range of choices for potential development of hydropower plants, including the upstream sections of River Nile, characterized by a series of rapids. Bujagali Hydropower Project was chosen, studied and looked at as the least cost site. 
The Bujagali Falls lie some 10 kilometers below Lake Victoria, Africa's largest lake and source of the River Nile. The Bujagalis are distinctive because of the sheer volume of water cascading over the series of low rapids. In 1999, Parliament passed a law that put an end to government's monopoly over the power sector. This provided an opening to the private sector to invest in large-scale power generation, transmission and distribution. A private investor, Bujagali Energy Limited, expressed interest in investing in this largest project in East Africa. Bringing in 250 megawatts, the project will almost double the country's installed capacity. In 2005, the government asked for international expressions of interest to develop the Bujagali project. Bell was one of the organizations that responded to this request from the government and was ultimately success, uh, selected as the uh, winning uh, proposal for this project. The 800 million US dollar worth project involves a consortium of 10 lenders. And of the 10 lenders that were selected, the African Development Bank was a key participant in, that, uh, in, the, in the lenders group. The African Development Bank mobilizes resources for the continent's economic and social development by financing public and private operations. The African Development Bank invested in the project 180 million US dollars and 70 million for the construction of a 75 kilometer long transmission line. Now this particular loan has benefited from collaboration of the ADB and the government of Japan. Uh, in truth, it was entered into between the African Development Bank and the government of Japan for a, 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 an enhanced private sector assistance, which is called EPSA. Work on the 250 megawatt hydropower project commenced in mid-2007. The project employs a workforce of 2,500 people, thus improving the lives of more than 12,000 people. Fifty-two-year-old Masa Yafesi is an ex-employee of Bujagali Hydropower Project. He is clearing his chicken's house as he prepares to restock it with new birds. This is one of the many benefits Yafesi earned from offering his services at the project. As a local community leader, Yafesi was employed as a community liaison officer. By the time his contract expired last year, he had earned enough to take care of his family of eight, pay school fees, renovate his house and invest the rest in properties. The salary was getting helped me to educate my children. And I'm very proud that one has already finished her university and she's working with, with one of the giant telecommunication companies. And the two are at university. One is in senior five and one is in joint senior one this year. When I got the job, I renovated my house to the standard you can see. I managed to put up some business houses, two business houses down at our trading center. And my poultry farm, I increased on the number of the birds I had. By the end of 2010, four years down the road, substantial progress had been made on the Bujagali hydropower project. The majority of the civil works are now complete. We're uh, essentially saying the project is over 80% complete at this point in time. Uh, we have a target completion date of uh, April of 2012, and we're targeting first generation in the uh, fourth quarter of this year. So within eight, nine months from now, we'll start seeing the first energy coming from Bujigali. Phase one of the project involved diversion of Nile River. At completion of the diversion, the Nile River will entirely flow through the Bujagali spillway gates. A project of this magnitude no doubt has tremendous impact on the surrounding communities. 
A special program was instituted for resettlement and compensation of the 86 families that were affected. 120 acres of land was acquired within close proximity to the project to resettle 34 of the 86 affected families. We are different alternatives of resettlement. You would either come here at the Naminya resettlement, uh, where a house is constructed and you live in this house, or we, you would be given alternative building materials that would put up a similar house and the other facilities, and then you relocate to the area of your choice and 50 of the other displaced people chose that option and they moved to other areas of their mm. Community social facilities such as health centers, village agricultural produce markets, classroom blocks and a business centre have been established to benefit the communities. One of our goals with Buchigali is to make sure that these people are properly and uh, respectfully dealt with on an individual basis such that they can pick up their lives at a, at a different location but they're definitely no worse off they, than where they were initially with the goal to actually make them better off to where this is. So that could be through education, through various assistance programs, through housing uh, upgrades and so forth like that. The construction of high voltage power lines to evacuate the power from Bujagali to the grid is in advanced stages. It is a 220 kV line from, constructed from Bujagali running up to Kawanda. It is a suburb of Kampala, 75 km line. Then from Kawanda, we are building another, under the same project, uh, another line to, to 132 kV to connect to Mutundwe, the existing grid. The transmission line will be managed by the Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited, UETCL, on behalf of the government of Uganda. The ADB loan is expected to be paid back in 40 years with a 10-year grace period. So the tariff definitely will be manageable. Because of the critical need for energy increment, Uganda government attaches a lot of importance to the Bujagali hydropower project and ranks it among the country's top potential economic stimulant projects. If you don't have adequate power supply, the economy clearly uh, declines in growth. If you have increment in power supply, especially for industrial growth, for commercial operations for everybody, then the economy grows, grows very fast. So clearly we expect that um, the, with the coming of Bujagali, this will boost the economic development of this country. We are optimistic that when this Bujagali power station starts, it will put pump in more power into the grid and also give sufficiency for the consumers to rely on. We shall not have this load shedding power cars this way. We expect to get more power so that Angel does her homework without interruption. Hope we shall get good performance.